welcome to when one number is near 100. Um, in this lesson I'm going to solve some questions by adjusting one number to the nearest 100. But I'm going to start with a really easy question first. In fact in this lesson all I'm going to look at is the addition and in the next lesson we'll have a look at some subtraction. Okay, here's my first question, 6 plus 9. So I need to imagine what that looks like and it is a group of 6 and a group of 9. And I think to myself how could that question be easier to answer? Well, it would be nice if that wasn't actually a 9, if it was a 10. Now, the only way that I can change this pile into a 10 is by taking one of the counters from the 6 and moving it over here so that now I have a pile of 10 and a pile of 5. So let's record um, what that looks like. So I made this pile of 9 one bigger by changing it into a 10 and I got this counter over here from this pile which meant that this pile ended up getting smaller by 1 so instead of being 6 it became 5 so my question became 5 plus 10 equals 15 so 6 plus 9 equals 15 now let's try some harder ones where we are using uh, numbers num numbers close to 100 okay 55 plus 98. So in my mind I'm thinking about a group of 55 counters and a group of 98 counters. And I think to myself, well, it would be a lot easier if this 98 was actually 100. So I think, how could I change the 98 into a 100? And I do that by adding two counters. Now these two counters must have come from this group over here. So instead of having 55 in it, it's now going to have two less counters in it. So instead of having 55 counters, it's only going to have 53. So you can see this side got bigger with two counters, but this side got smaller by two counters because I was moving the counters from that pile to this one. But it means I've now got an easier question to answer. 53 plus 100 is 153. So 55 plus 98 must be 100. And 53. Let's try another one over here. Um, 27 plus, let's try this one, 102 equals uh, something. Alright, so I'm thinking in my head I've got a group of 27 and a group, I've got a group of 102. And just like last time, I think it would be a lot easier if this number actually was 100. So I think to myself, how could I change it into 100? Well, what I could do is I could take two counters off that group. Now those two counters that I've taken away from this group, they have to go somewhere, so they go onto this group over here. So this side gets bigger by two. And it now becomes 29. Now I've got a much easier question to answer. 29 plus 100 is 129. So 27 plus 102 is 129. So let's just have a wee look at the sort of pattern that you can see so far. One side gets smaller and the other side gets bigger. Over here, one side's getting bigger, so the other side's getting smaller because you're moving some counters from one pile into another pile. Now this method isn't uh, good just for numbers up to 100, it's actually good for um, any questions which are near a tidy number. Let's try Let's try one like this. Now I think to myself, 58 is quite close to a tidy number, and it would be way easier if it was a tidy number, so I'm going to change 58 into 60. And I think to myself, how have I changed 58 into 60? Well, I must have added two counters. Now there's only one place where I could have got these two counters from, and that's this pile over here. So in my head I'm imagining taking two counters from the 37, which means there won't be 37 left any there anymore. There'll be two less than that. So there'll be 35 counters. So now I've got 35 plus 60, which equals 95. So 37 plus 58 must equal 95. I think this strategy is a really good way of solving some addition, uh, addition questions. So just remember in this strategy, 
one number is getting bigger and one number is getting smaller because you're moving some counters from one pile into another pile. Check out teachertools.co.nz for the uh, subtraction part of this lesson.